The SQL Alter Table statement allows you to add, remove and modify columns in an existing table. It also lets you add a primary key and foreign key constraints. The essential syntax of the Alter Table statement is shown here. The keywords Alter Table are followed by the name of the table that will be changed, then either Add, Drop Column or Alter Column, depending on what you want to do. Here's an example of the Alter Table statement that adds a new column to an existing table called Customers. When this statement is executed, a new variable length character column called Email will be added to the table. This example adds a new variable length character column called Postcode. It also specifies that it may not be left blank when records are input. Notice the use of NOT NULL. This example adds more than one column at a time to an existing table. Notice how the new column specifications are separated by commas and that there's no need for parentheses in the statement other than those used for the data types. Adding multiple columns with one statement isn't supported by all database management systems. For example, this will work in MySQL and SQL Server, but in Microsoft Access, columns need to be added individually. Here's an example of the Alter Table statement that drops, that is, removes a column from an existing table. When this statement is executed, the column called Middle Name and all of its data will be removed from the table altogether. If a column is a primary key or a foreign key, or indeed there are any other constraints on it, it's usually necessary to drop these constraints first. In this example, several columns are being dropped at once. As was the case when adding multiple columns, the dropped column clauses are separated by commas, and there's no need for parentheses at all. Dropping multiple columns with one statement is supported by MySQL and SQL Server, but not Microsoft Access. Access will, however, let you drop columns individually. This Alter Table statement changes the data type of an existing column in a table called Customers. When this statement is executed, the data type of the existing column called Country will be changed from whatever it used to be to a variable length character data type. There are a few things to bear in mind when changing the data types of existing columns. If the column already contains data, the new data type must be appropriate for the existing data. You can't change the name of an existing column. To do this, you would need to drop the column and then add it back again. This means either losing the data or copying it to a temporary column first with a DML command. Most database management systems, including MySQL and SQL Server and Microsoft Access, will not let you alter multiple columns in one statement. If you're using MySQL rather than Microsoft Access or SQL Server, you'll need to use modify instead of alter column. This example adds a primary key constraint to the customers table. The column Customer ID should already exist in the table. This statement changes it into a primary key. And finally, this example adds a foreign key constraint to the Customer column in a table called Orders. The Orders table must already contain a column called Customer that identifies which customer in the Customers table placed each order in the Orders table. The References clause establishes which is the related column in the Customers table, in this case, Customer ID.